In this video, the experts at TechTarget and ESG discuss the impact of XDR, SASE, and Zero Trust on cybersecurity. And for complete coverage of RSA Conference 2021, click the link above or in the description below. Hello and welcome to this lightning round session for RSA Conference 2021, the impact of XDR, SASE, and Zero Trust on Cybersecurity Strategies. I'm Rob Wright, Security News Director at Tech Target, and I am joined by three lead analysts from Enterprise Strategy Group, John Grady, Dave Gruber, and John Oltsik. We're going to discuss three technology areas that have become especially pertinent for many organizations over the last year, and since this is a lightning round session, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, okay, guys, first question, Zero Trust. It touches on a lot of areas that can be implemented in many different ways. So how best do we describe zero trust in, say, 30 seconds? Uh, John Grady, why don't you start us off? I don't know if there's any way to do that, Rob. <laughs> really, really quickly, uh, it's, it's about, you know, we know inherently not trusting anything on the network, but providing more conditional access, constantly evaluating security posture of the devices and, and entities that are making connections on the network taking more of a risk-based approach. Everyone understands this takes a, a large number of tools to implement, but you have to think about it as a strategy uh, and really take a use case specific mode of getting there uh, over time. And John Altick, why don't you uh, give your perspective on it? Well, there's not much to add to what John said, uh, it's, it's a, but it is a paradigm shift. So we used to trust everything inside the network and not trust everything outside the network. And now we don't want to trust anything. So it's a journey. Uh, we have to get there through a phased implementation and we have to coordinate with the business. So it's a strategic Im imperative, not any kind of technology project. Uh, Dave, the shift to remote work over the last year seemed like the perfect time to have a maybe a coming out party for zero trust implementation. But has that happened? Has it impacted uh, the strategies and the implementation plans for Zero Trust? Yeah, so certainly the remote worker has been a forcing function for this whole idea. The idea is not new, but, but it's one where the remote worker has really made this uh, a dramatic need now. Uh, the, the challenge, however, is it's not a flip the switch. It's not a single solution effort. The good news is lots of organizations are committed uh, we see strategies in place. Uh, we see a ton of support from individual vendors along the way. So we're making some progress. Is it difficult to implement? Because I know that there's a lot of moving parts here. Um, does it seem maybe simple on the surface, but just takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more understanding of what you're doing with identity, access management, so on and so forth? Anyone can answer. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll jump in there. Yeah, it is hard. Uh, there, there's no question. But I think, you know, you have to take a longer term view, as John Olsick said, 77% of the organizations we've surveyed have seen both security and business benefits. It may take some time to get there. I think you have to go in eyes wide open, understand that it will take time, but there's absolutely kind of positive light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, let's turn to XDR, extended detection and response. There are different perspectives and definitions for XDR. But how would you define it and maybe compare it to, say, an area like traditional threat detection and response? That's an area I'm a little bit more familiar with, but there are a lot of perspectives out there about what XDR is and isn't. Uh, Dave, why don't you start us off? Yeah, sure. So at ESG, we're taking a fairly broad view of XDR. XDR is an integrated suite of security products. It spans IT infrastructures. It's designed to interoperate and coordinate on threat prevention, detection, and response, and that it integrates uh, different control points, telemetry, analytics, and operations into a, a one broad enterprise system to power the security operations center. Uh, John Oltsik, is there confusion about this term compared to regular threat detection and response um, amongst customers that are looking to invest in that area? Yes, there is a ton of confusion. It's a new term. But what we're seeing is that customers are where you would think they are. They're uh, doing research on the products. They're talking to people like Dave and I. They're um, calling in their vendors to get a roadmap perspective. So there's an acute need for new threat detection and response tools. So there's a market opportunity there. But at the same time, confusion doesn't do anyone any good. So we're advising our clients to do much more uh, market education. And we're advising end users to really take 
a long, slow, and strategic approach to XDR. There's a lot of hype about this term, though. Um, what is the best way for, uh, let's say, a large enterprise to approach this emerging category? Is this something that they should be looking at? Should, there, should they be cautious about investing in it? First of all, no, caution uh, not, for sure. There's a real need here, so we need to do something about it. There's some different approaches to XDR, so it sort of depends a bit on what your investment in your security operations uh, environment is. There's sort of three categories of XDR that John and I have been talking about from a solutions standpoint. First, I'll call it a full stack XDR solution where the primary security controls and the analytics and the detection response is all provided from the single vendor in an integrated environment. This is really the most turnkey approach to thinking about detection and response in the organization. The second is what we're calling overlay XDR. This is basically an analytics-based approach that sits on top of your existing security controls. These are solutions that are heavily machine learning driven. They often uh, have cloud delivered data stores, big data lakes, and it can take uh, inputs from all the different security co controls in the organization. And it uh, focuses on stitching all that data together, correlating, aggregating, and then doing the detection response functions. That's a little easier to approach for a lot of organizations uh, who are heavily invested in their own infrastructure already. And then the, the third category is the endpoint and EDR vendors who are expanding their offerings to XDR. Many have built big analytics engines on top of it. Some have invested in other controls, but most have a partnership approach where the EDR technology plugs into a number of other uh, security control technologies to bring that, to gate, th that data together in an analytics platform. So those are the sort of three different types of XDR solutions in the marketplace. And which one's right for you? It depends a bit on what your prior investment strategies have been and um, what kinds of relationships you have with other vendors. Let's turn to our last uh, category, last but not least, SASE, Secure Access Service Edge. What is SASE and how does it maybe touch on or overlap or, or connect to, uh, say, Zero Trust? SASE is essentially the convergence of network security and edge perimeter security tools and SD-WAN in a more of a cloud-delivered microservices-based model. That's kind of the core definition. And, and the reality is that we're, we're not all the way there because that's, that's a lot, right? The traditional right. security tools uh, haven't even gone uh, fully cloud-delivered in a lot of cases. Similar to Zero Trust, it's a journey. I think the difference is it's closer to a discrete solution or product architecture, whereas Zero Trust is really about the, the how and setting the right policies, taking a different um, thought process to security. And where they really overlap is with Zero Trust Network Access, which is the evolution of VPN and incorporating that into a, a SASE framework or architecture. Um, so there's overlap, but they are discrete uh, cybersecurity trends for sure. So because of that, are, are there different obstacles or implementation challenges with uh, SASE versus Zero Trust because it's more solution oriented? So there's, I think, two main obstacles that I see. Um, the, the first is cloud. And, and we found that most organizations still have the majority of their network security tools in an on-premises appliance-based approach. So they have to transition those to the cloud. The second is organizational dynamics. You're talking about the security team and the networking team having to come together to source, use, test, implement a converged solution. But that's a big ask. Uh, and it's something that companies need to start thinking about more before they, they go down the technology path. How are these organizations or teams within the organization working together? How are you starting to think about measuring your security team more on business outcomes and things that maybe the, the network and, and IT team is more used to? Um, to get them kind of rowing in the same direction. Great. Well, guys, I think this lightning round is officially out of time. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and for weighing in on these three emerging technologies. <laughs>